You know, I recently got into the Terminator RPG. I'm still wrapping my head around it, but in doing so, I started thinking about all the worlds and settings that could have their own TTRPGs associated with them that I've tried that I just haven't clicked with. So, in that vein, Brian Von Vie here. Which TTRPG systems do you look at and just kind of go, yeah, no. Seeing anything turned into a 5th edition campaign, whenever there is an exciting IP that I care about, finding out that they've made it into a 5th edition TTRPG instantly deflates my hype and I stop paying attention to it. This totally isn't trauma from Adventure Time being gutted and forced into a system that doesn't support it. By the way, this! I'm so tired of 5th edition being the default system for new settings or books based on existing IP. The Ghibli Legend of Zelda setting I've seen floating around was super interesting to me, but the fact that it runs on 5th edition makes me want to skip it completely. 5th edition has so many heroic fantasy tropes built into it that people don't realize are there. Every single D&D game that doesn't want to do heroic fantasy feels forced to me. Even most D&D actual play podcasts feel off since they are using D&D with a play culture so far removed from it, such as Critical Role, Dungeons and Daddies, Dimension 20, etc. Now the worst part about X Thing being turned into a 5th edition campaign is that basically nobody wants to consider the fact that X Thing requires, quite usually, a ton of homebrew to work, and, you know, actually knowing about game design for the thing to operate as it should. Literally the one singular Digimon conversion I know for 5th edition is so god awful atrocious and incomplete I think it subconsciously influenced me to create an entire class for a Digimon tamer. Which in order for it to work required me not to follow the mold of the system most homebrew heads towards. Just to get the Digimon to function and create a whole subsystem that actually made it at least somewhat feel like these were monsters capable of nukes, but within valid damage dice ranges. Although I know a lot of the TTRPG community that plays 5th edition will probably have an aneurysm for even suggesting a homebrew where character creation involves choosing two stats for saving throws instead of a prescribed decision. Shadowrun. I love that world, but no. I've GM'd Shadowrun since 3rd edition. I still feel like I don't know how it's supposed to work, and I end up making up most of it. Great world with a mess of a system. Powered by the Apocalypse. Right here, Powered by the Apocalypse just works in a way that isn't fun for me, and I've tried it on three different occasions with three different games. Same. I think the ideas are great, and I've gotten excited about multiple PBTA games, but every time I actually try to run them, I'm fighting 30, ouch, years of how to use skills in RPGs, and my players are fighting years of how to use skills in RPGs to be prepared, and the payoff doesn't seem worth completely unlearning and relearning how we play. My groups already avoid uninteresting roles try to make player choices significant, and have building tension in how things play out. We don't need a system for that. I don't think PBTA is bad by any stretch, but I hate having my excitement about a setting or story popped because I can't do things the way I'm comfortable doing them. I'm definitely much more wary about checking out such games. I might try a couple of Forged and Darkness games, but I suspect the results will be the same. And I really dislike to roll to avoid stress and harm mechanics that I've seen. My time is just too precious to spend it on something that might be great, but would require a lot of effort to grok when I can spend that time on other great games that don't require that effort. Fate. It's got this special thing about it where it's supposed to feel like you're building up cool narrative advantages to overcome, but really, the button you're pressing is get advantage, with the narrative a secondary consideration. Then once you've primed the pump enough so to speak, you press the F*** THEM IN ONE GO ROCKET TAG button. There's no sense of back and forth exchanged blows struggling to overcome something. It's just prime and fire. 
fate is just crying out loudly for either deeper mechanics and to become a trad game, or for more narrative authority to deny certain mechanics. I just never have seen it work in a way that makes it feel good. Anything that requires special dice, be it special markings like Genesis or DCC's Roll D16, is a pass from me. I also hate custom dice, but they are not really used much in DCC, and normal dice or an app can do the work for you. The reason I say that DCC is worth it, don't let the dice put you off. I even broke and got the dice. There are a number of systems that I've just bounced off of for one reason or another. On one end of the spectrum, it's 3.x to 5th edition D&D, and on the other, it's everything related to Forged in the Dark. For WOTC, or Wizards of the Coast if you're not familiar with that acronym by now, Dungeons and Dragons, it's the complexity without commensurate benefit to flavor and depth combined with an extremely combat-focused play loop. For Forged in the Dark, it's the intentional disconnect between the player and character and the fact that the system fights against immersion, role-playing as I enjoy it anyway, and verisimilitude. I'm not saying that FITD is a bad system. It does what it sets out to do quite well, and a number of people I respect greatly really love it. It's just that what it does is not what I want from an RPG experience. Complexity and intricacy aren't immediate turnoffs for me, oh my, especially if the system is well made and coherent. What really makes me go, yeah, no, is when the game's pitch or preview clearly shows its D&D ancestry. Fatal or Rahua Racial Holy War, a yeah, no thanks, but for other reasons. Okay, this answer is just cheating. There's no sport in it. It's like deer hunting from a helicopter with heat-seeking missiles. Hey, Bambi, you know what happened to your ma? She got nuked from the heavens above. <laughs> For me, it's Blades in the Dark and Lancer. I think they're both excellent games that are well-designed and well-made. I think myself and their designers enjoy very similar things in RPGs, but in these particular designs, some of the things I like most are given explicit, well-implemented mechanics, and as a result are almost removed from the game in many cases. For Blades, that's indulging in vices. Since it's a reoccurring role that everyone makes all the time, it often doesn't make sense to narrate or describe it so. It's ironically one of the only games where I don't describe my character indulging in vices. I think it works best for people that don't often explore that idea, but as someone who does, it just results in skipping over what I thought would be my favorite part of the game. Now for Lancer, it's gotta be the out of control combat RP. I swear I've had better home scenes in Delta Green and out of combat scenes in D&D. Lancer's out-of-combat scenes are great for adding RP to your excellent mech combat game, but I felt they sped the narrative play up enough that it just gets out of the way without disappearing entirely. This is good design, but not what I'm looking for. I'd absolutely recommend or run either, and I don't have the same issue running Blades as I do playing it, but Blades has got to be the game I like the most that I want to play the least. Pathfinder, you are a demon. I assume it's second edition, and the way the system works with all the tags and the like because I completely understand. I really enjoy systems like that. I enjoy playing Shadowrun 5th edition to give you my enjoyment of complexity, but I know plenty of people that bounce off Pathfinder. Honestly, as I got older, I found myself less and less into crunchy games, and more drawn to simple and elegant ones. But yeah, Pathfinder, for me, feels like someone distilled the experience of doing your taxes and made it into a game. Palladium. Oh yeah. It's the grand old dame of RPGs and the very first TTRPG I ever played. But it's way too clunky and awkward to play anymore. There is a Savage Worlds version of Rifts that is playable. Oh, P.S. to avoid arguing, I am well aware that D&D is older and there are modern revisions of the original D&D games, but Palladium is still in business. 
and has to be one of the oldest continuous run RPG companies still around. And the issue isn't that Palladium is so old, the issue is that Palladium is so old without doing any new additions of its content. Time to sound like a crotchety old man. <laughs> anything PBTA, anything 5th edition, anything Cypher system, editing. After thinking some more, really any game with the ACHP levels break down. Anything with proprietary special dice that isn't an immediate no. Ah, uh, but it's already starting at a huge disadvantage. Same goes with anything using cards. I'm pretty much never touching a Paizo system again. PF and SF are just incredibly dated, and Pathfinder 2nd Edition is frankly not a very successful system at what it wants to be, in my opinion, which makes it worse that they're porting SF over to it. But beyond the design ethos, the fan base is kind of the big problem. Paizo exists at a level of popularity that is just niche enough compared to WotC to get some of the we are better than 5th edition fuck you for playing that that every other RPG has, while still being mainstream enough to still have most of the same obnoxious habits as the WotC community they hate on. Now I'll preface this by saying I'm a diehard Paizo, and have bought everything they've released for 2nd edition and most of what they've released for 1st edition. That being said, I have a library's worth of other systems, and with Pathfinder 2nd edition in particular, I agree about the fans. They're almost as annoying now as the 5th edition fans who force anything to be 5th edition instead of just trying a new system that has what they want and works with it better. I don't like 5th edition because I want X or Y or Z. I just play Pathfinder 2. When something like 13th Age, Dungeon World, Forbidden Lands, OSR, or anything else would be an even better recommendation than Pathfinder 2nd edition, depending on what exactly they wanted. Now, I do think there are plenty of times to recommend PF2 to 5th edition players when they want exactly D&D, but not D&D. But otherwise, there's a whole world of smaller systems out there too. And they all do their own things very well. And depending on what the GM or player wants would be a better recommendation. Brian Von Vier here. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and of course, let me know down in the comments below. What are TTRPG systems that make you just look at them and go, yeah, no, I'm not touching that with a 10-foot pole? We love you all. Be safe, be happy. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.